I'm talking like y'all know me. I'm Tony Harris Taylor. I have um, three groups that I run personally, two in person, one virtual. And then I have five leaders across the country who are building out groups, including in Canada. And I'm super excited. My um, leader in Canada signed someone up in China today. Y'all, we are going global. Woohoo! Give us a a uh, hand clap and a what what for that. So I'm super excited. We are truly going global and we're excited for that. Today, we have a very special guest, a friend of mine, Mr. Ed Robinson, but to set the stage for Mr. Robinson while we have people trickling in, how many of you like to play games? Hands up, let me just see. You like games, Caravan? I see you and Christy and Sheila, Val, yeah, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Kathy Nab. We like to play games. So I'm going to put a poll up and we're going to, this is not the poll I said. Let me see here. Okay, very good. <laughs> Number one poll, who's your favorite leadership expert? After today, it'll be Ed Robinson. But who is your favorite leadership expert? Expert John Maxwell, Ken Blanchard, or Simon Sinek. All right, Ken Blanchard, he's not getting any votes. Um, Ken Blanchard is who moved my cheese. Hey, Samuel, I see your hand up. Is that to respond to me? Samuel's a brand new member, just signed up on Monday in my group. So welcome, Samuel. Is your hand up for a question or answering my question? If it's answering my question, you can put your hand down. All right. So we're going to end the poll and we're going to share results. All right. Who said Simon Sinek? Somebody unmute yourself. Okay. Care, Care Vang, where are you from? Say who you are, what you do, and why did you say Simon Sinek? Hi, so I'm Care Vang from Minnesota, part of Angela Ober's team. And I own a web development, uh, web development design service right now. So I like Simon Sinek because he approached it from a human first approach. And so it's still business, it's still marketing, but it's still, you know, like you got to think about the experience. Business and brand it kind of drives on experience. That's what a lot of us tend to forget when we're in the transaction of things. Yeah. Approaching it from a human experience. I like that. Excellent. Nice to meet you, Caravan. And Angela Ober, congratulations on your marriage. All right. So who else said Simon Sinek? Let's hear one more Simon fan. Sheila, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I I just love the way he, he talks. It's so simple the way he engages with you and the way he explains everything. And he just seems so healthy and well balanced. Yeah. And, uh, and and every time I hear him speak, I just I get warm feelings all over because he's just so balanced and he's just so uh, he he, just, he I feel like he's a friend. He's so yeah. personal, he's so personable. I and love his that. and his knowledge and what he shares is so. Uh, it just it brings just brings warm feelings all over me. <laughs> I like Introduce it. yourself. Who are you? Oh, what do you do? And yeah. where are you from? Sorry, um, Sheila Collins. I'm a realtor for, uh, here in Houston. I'm also a video marketing coach, and I'm a part of NIA um, Humble Chapter. Awesome. She's in one of my groups. Yay, Sheila. Who said uh, John Maxwell? Okay, Glenn and Danielle. So Glenn first, then Danielle. All right. So the reason I said John Maxwell is because um, obviously he, he's been around for years uh, and he looks at leadership from a very different dynamic. Um, he, like he has many, many books out on leadership. He doesn't just look at it from one way. He looks at it in most in very different ways. And then even um, as a believer, he kind of brings it to the Bible as well, uh, where I truly believe that a lot of leadership principles come from um, and whatnot. So he's just a very dynamic um, speaker. Um, awesome. And then also author as well. So he's he's definitely great. Yay. Yay. Introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And which group are you in? Gotcha. I sure will. So um, my name is Glenn Walker. Uh, I'm a part of the East Montgomery Money Makers. And what I do is that I show my clients how to what to do with the money after they worked all week and um, to make it. So I show them how to plan for it after they make it. All right, Danielle, easiest pie. <laughs> 
I had a great one-to-one -one with her last time. So I know I'm you're already in my calendar for when I'm in Houston. So I'm super excited. I'm getting off the plane and visiting Tony like two hours later. So it'll be super exciting. Um, I am Danielle. I own Easy as Pie Design. We're a marketing and development firm. Um, I chose John because I've met both of them, and Simon is just too put together. Like that man is just spot on with the glasses and the look, and I can't hold that. Like I like I love him, but I can't hold a candle to that. Like that's. That's just too much ironing in his life. I can't do that. So, um, so it was a toss up on this one. Both of them are fabulous. I'm a big fan of Simon. I chose John because I'm building my leadership. We have a team of 20 now. So I'm trying to build my leadership skills and my EQ skills, um, especially with my team. And as they start to interact with the clients more than I do, et cetera. So it was literally a toss of the coin. I love them both. I love Start With Why, Certified the Whole Kit Caboodle. I love, I love Simon so much. And exactly what Glenn was saying earlier, um, the leadership development is actually my focus right now. So that's why I chose John. Yay. One more. Dion, Dr. Dion, I know it, your answer. Go ahead. Hey, Tony. Yes, certified leadership trainer, coach, and speaker with the John Maxwell team. And definitely because of his faith, but he knows how to integrate his faith appropriately. The other thing, he's very authentic, down to earth, humble, transparent. He's not trying to be perfect, not trying to come off as perfect. He teaches from his experience and his mistakes, which I think is most important. Uh, Simon Sinek, he looks all that in a bag of chips, but John Maxwell's for me. Awesome. I'm going to launch the next poll. What is the primary key to your leadership style? Is it so self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, or relationship management? And these actually are Ed's things. So Ed, I picked this up from you. So awesome. I'm sorry, I don't get to vote. Okay, we're halfway through, so click one. Don't think too long. You you uh, analytical ones, pick one. It ain't life and death today. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to end this poll in five, four, three two, one. All right. And I'm going to share the results. So I want to hear from the people who said self-management because relationship management, lots of people said that, but I want to hear from the minority here. So who said self-management? Unmute yourself, introduce yourself and tell us why. Fair? Oh, okay. Kara, that was yeah, you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So why did you say self-management? Because you can't lead anybody else if you can't lead yourself. If you can't wake up at seven o'clock when you used to say you want to, if you can't eat um, at some time you want to, if you can't plan your day, you're pretty much a hypocrite. You're trying to tell everyone else what to do. And on top of that, when you follow through for yourself, you build a self-confidence, that authenticity. You know, you're more authentic. Everything you learn, you can reground yourself to how you do things. You don't have to be like how Simon Sinek, John Maxwell, you can take the knowledge and then ground it with who you are. And when you ground in who you are, you understand where your teammates are coming from, where your, where your employees' contracts are coming from as well. I love it. So Thank you. you. If you can't lead yourself, how can you lead other people? I love the perspective. So um, who else said self-management? There was two people who said it. Who else? Unmute yourself and tell us if it was you. Okay. Hi. Yes. Um, North Sheriff, sorry. Um, I had my video off. Um, yes, I said self um, awareness because I think it starts, you can't really interact with others until you think about yourself and how what you say and do affects others. So, um, starting with the self awareness and thinking about things, reading things before I hit send, that sort of stuff, that's been important for years. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Well, y'all didn't come to hear me, right? Y'all came to hear my friend, Mr. Ed Robinson. So I am going to find my, so let me tell you about networking. Okay. Cause that's why we are all the foundation of why we are here. So I was having a one-to-one -one with someone in my network 
years ago. It's been five years now. And she, when I told her what I was looking to do, she said, do you know Ed Robinson? It's like, no, I've not met him. She um, pulled up his LinkedIn. I was like, oh, he's cute. Um, <laughs> she said, you can find him at the, the um, National Speakers Association Houston meeting. So I said, okay. I looked up National Speakers Association Houston. I went and registered, paid the cover charge, showed up, and sure enough, Ed Robinson was there. I said, I came here to meet you. You remember that, Ed? I said, I came here to meet you. He said, great, let's book a date. Not that kind of date, a one-to-one, -one, <laughs> right? And so we booked a one-to-one, -one. we met, Synergy, and now he's a brother from another mother. We've done business together. I've hired him, he's hired me, he's referred me, I referred him. You know, I hooked him up with a friend. I mean, that's networking at its finest. The question I have for you is how intentional and drastic are you in your network? They lead to lifelong relationships. And today, I am proud to introduce you to my friend, Mr. Ed Robinson. His bio says, Ed Robinson transforms individuals into professionals, managers into leaders, and leaders into rainmakers. And in Houston today, it is pouring. So yes, we like the rain. A certified speaking professional and former CPA, Ed is the author of four books and an expert in practice growth. His energetic, engaging, and entertaining style is only one reason why Ed's strategies improve performance, helping individuals manage change and increase revenue regardless of economic times and challenges. My friend Ed has spoken in over 30 countries. In fact, he's sitting in an airport right now. And I just am proud to say that he is amazing at, at leadership, and at sales. Welcome to the stage, my friend, Mr. Edward Robinson. Tony, that is fabulous. I am glad you guys are recording this. I may record that and carry it with me as I travel the country. I mean, that's powerful. I, I feel like I'm important. <laughs> I am excited to be with everybody and I, I um, like the poll that you did to start us off. Um, and I'm going to use that as a transition as we move forward. I, we have about 40 minutes together and I, I'm a big believer of interactive um, and engaging type of program. So I like it to be very interactive as we go through here. Um, and Tony, I will ask you this question before we move forward. I think everyone has in their... Um, either in their chat or in their email, a handout that is kind of a map of some of the things that I want to cover and some of the principal things that I wanted us to focus on. And where I, I just dropped it in chat. So everybody check chat. It should be there. And print awesome. it if you can real quick. So a couple of things. Let's start off with a couple of comments about the poll. I was excited not only about the poll, but who you chose. And as you said, who is your favorite? I have to I have to say, all three of them are favorites of mine for various reasons, for various reasons. But something that I like us to, to write down as it relates to leadership. Um, and when we're growing and building a business, we're solopreneurs, we're entrepreneurs. I always say that it's imperative, not good or a nice idea, it's imperative that you find a mentor or a guru to help you move forward. I love the ways that you guys decide, um, describe the various, um, I'm going to call them gurus, that uh, Tony had picked. Simon, I, I, I love Simon. I do work up in Vancouver and I've had a chance to, to have a sit down with him. Um, same with John Maxwell. I love the way that they, uh, I think it was Glenn 
who shared that he intermixes scripture with real life. And I think scripture is a basis for a lot of the things that we do. And it is nothing to, to frown at. It's basically our book to live life to its fullest. And then Ken Blanchard. No one said Ken Blanchard. Um, I've had an opportunity to meet with Ken Blanchard, and he is known for Who Moved My Cheese, but he also did the One Minute Manager. Um, I, When I was writing my books, I had the good fortune of flying from Chicago, and it was a conference I was at, and he was speaking at, to, um, I guess we were going to, from Chicago down to Miami, and he shared with me, we sat next to each other, and he shared with me some great ideas of marketing my book and some of the things that he does that has made his books bestsellers. A little piece of trivia. At the time that I was on the plane with Ken Blanchard, he had written 45 books and he shared. He says, early on in my career, I wrote all that I knew. After that, I started partnering with other people and through partnering with them, it allowed me to leverage their knowledge and my knowledge to take us to a new space to grow our businesses. So that's huge. Now, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in the various religions, but I do know the definitions of various words. How many of you have a guru? Um, if you have a guru or a mentor in your life, go to the chat and just write down um, your name and who your guru is. And I just like to see the chats move by seeing all the gurus or all the mentors you have. So if in fact you have a mentor, put that person's name in the chat. John Maxwell, of course, of course. Scott, yes. Wow, various names. Hey, Phil, um, I, I see some familiar names. All those are, are great. See several of them coming through there. Beautiful. Here's something that I learned. Guru is defined in two separate terms. GU, the GU, is in the darkness. It means in darkness. The RU of Guru is to bring out of the darkness. So the whole purpose of mentorship, the whole purpose of having a Guru is to have someone else help guide you out of the darkness so that you can have a brighter light in the direction that you want to go. So I just wanted to share that when Tony was sharing those things up there, I felt as though that was some critical information. And there, for the second poll question, I'll touch that as we go through our, our handout. So I'm going to ask you, just like I asked you a couple of questions there, as we go through the program, I'm going to ask you to write things into the chat. If you have questions, um, hold those, put those questions into the, um, into the chat box and, um, Tony, do you want the questions going in the chat or the questions and answers? Just the questions. And then I'll, okay. I'll feed you the questions as you call for them. Awesome, awesome. So today we're going to go through the whole, um, my pre I wanna say the whole presentation. This is a presentation that could take six hours and I'm not gonna do that to you today, but we're going to go through several aspects of it. As we, as we look at this and we're moving forward, you definitely do not need to have another introduction of me since the one that Tony shared was so fabulous. And I'm going to go backwards for a second to take you back to your chat. How many of you consider yourselves entrepreneurs? And when you, act, if you consider yourself entrepreneurs, I think most of us are going to fall into that category. Do you consider yourself leaders? Go ahead and give me a yes or no under the chat. Do you consider yourselves leaders? Awesome, awesome. And I ask that question because many people think that because we're entrepreneurs or in an entrepreneurial space, that we're not as or perceived to be leaders in our lives. But there's a lot of things that we do to be leaders. And I'm going to share one, one of my key ones. We become leaders based on a wide variety of things. 
I think we become leaders based on people that we've had in our lives. Let's call them gurus again. The gurus that we've had, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We see things that we love. We see things that we don't like. And we form who we become as leaders as we go through those strategies or as we walk through the path of what other people have brought. So I wanted to share with you that while we're all entrepreneurs and or solopreneurs, that we're, there's so many avenues that we have to show up as leaders. And I love Tony's question on the onset, basically saying, what type of leader are you? Um, you know, that's kind of a, an emotional quotient or emotional intelligence question, because I think we're a combination of all of them. But I, here's kind of a test. And this is a test that I, um, I, I really want to get your answer to. You guys just wait a moment. It looks like we have a little technical difficulty here. Okay, I have one more poll. So what is your primary leadership skill? So I'm gonna launch that. What's your primary leadership skill? Influencer, collaborator, developing others or being a change catalyst? Okay, he'll be back. All right, what's your primary leadership skill? Who said influencer and why? Open your mic, introduce yourself. And why did you say influencer? Uh, hi everybody, my name is Lena Trinidad. Um, I said influencer, hold on, let me turn this back on. Oops. Um, I said influencer because I feel like um, that's kind of one of my styles is to influence people to get on board or come on in or uh, attend the event and, and things like that. And I had a lot of feedback once upon a time where people said, you know, the only reason we do this is because you, you're running it. And so I just feel like that's where my influence sits. Yay. I love that. Where you live, Lena? So I'm in beautiful West Palm Beach here with Dr. Dion, and uh, I do promotional products. So anything you need a logo on for anything, I can do, please. Awesome. Looks like Ed is back. So I'm going to um, turn it back over to him. Okay. Are we back? Yes. Are you back? <laughs> About influencing and why they chose each of the, each of the ones that we were looking at. Um, I'm gonna look at going and sharing my screen again. If in fact it takes us off, I'm going to just share with you various aspects of the handout without using the screen. I'm not sure if that's too much of a feed um, and I'm understanding that some people are having some weather issues. So I'll try that one more time. Otherwise we'll just go impromptu without that and, and run with it. Good? So when we were, I was sharing with you the various types of entrepreneurs out there. There's the optimistic, there's the innovator. Give you an example. The innovator basically focuses on creating a solution to a significant problem. One of the ones that would follow a good example of that is a, a company who is in, that's in innovation, the pharma, the whole um, COVID solutions. Um, Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, all of them went through that. And you look at the graph, it starts real slow. And for a lot of time, there's no revenue. Then all of a sudden there's a spike after they make their, their decision, they find the formula, they find the um, secret sauce, and now it's, they can extract that into the world. A specialist, on the other hand, relies on their skill set. Um, accountant, the lawyer, the banker. But what this one does is really based on their knowledge is creating revenue for personal. And I bring this up in a leadership program because I'd like us to focus on the builder. The builder has a different structure. They want to put together an infrastructure so that everyone falls into a category of being better. And if in fact I can, as a entrepreneur, solopreneur, build a business around me where I have other people help, helping me lift the, do the heavy lifting, then I become a more sustainable business and it becomes scalable where 
require all of my time. Does that make sense to everyone? So under the chat, I am going to ask which, um, and I think Tony asked that when I was off the air, which one of those particular profiles do you find yourself in? And I will put my confession in there. I'm more of a specialist initially, a solution provider for certain groups of people. But I do want to build an organization that can sustain itself and develop other folks. So I'm looking at a lot of builders. I've got a couple of builders in the chat. I see specialists into a builder. I love that. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of different perceptions. I want you to have in your mind, how do you focus on building leadership? So that said, I'm going to take us forward before we start having um, more issues. I want to make sure that you get as much information as I can possibly share. Um, and I will also make some of this recording available for you through Tony and just to make sure that you have critical information. So let me give you this leadership initiative that I focus on. You're looking at a bell curve. On the bell curve, it's um, when I was in college at university, I, had a, I went to a, a private Catholic university and I remember going to a philosophy class and my professor was Brother Jason. And Brother Jason shared that there's three types of people in the world. He goes, when you get out into the workforce, when you get out and into business, you're gonna see people fall in one of three categories. You have people, as you look at the bell curve who are on the front, the front end, those are people he considered hmm, to be non-producers. I put all of them up there so we don't have any um, technology issues. The first category is non-producers. In the middle, the 80%, that's producers. I feel as though most people in your world come to be productive and to be effective. People do not show up to be non-producers and to be lazy and laxical. I have 10%, I honestly think it's less than 5%, but they, people tend to think that they have more non-producers because that group tends to be louder and the squeaky wheel kind of gets a lot more attention. But here's why we're here today. There's 10% on the other end of that spectrum and we call them producer of producers. And that is synonymous with being a leader. Producers of producers focus on how can I build and you'll see in the upper left-hand corner of the handout that, I, that we have, it says, what, what do leaders do? Leaders' number one responsibility should be to produce producers of producers, meaning you're going to make more leaders in your organization so that you can continue to grow and that they have the strength to help you lift up the, uh, the whole organization. So I'm going to take a giant step backwards. I in the introduction, I heard quite a few of you talk about your, um, you've got 20 people in, in different areas. Tony was sharing the various networks that she, she has or NIA or um, organizations and all the people behind that. Hear me on this. Your number one job is to make them more productive because when you make them more productive, they get more producers. Those producers become producers of producers and that networking scheme continues to grow forever. Now, does anyone have questions of that or does that make sense? In the chat, share whether or not you agree with that or you find that to be very instrumental in how you have pursued leading your business. You got lots of, agree lots of agreements. Yeah, that, that chat room blows up pretty fast. I, like, I love that. So I'm going to move us a little bit further. What, stay in the chat. Here's what I'd like you to do. There's a lot of characteristics of what an effective leader is. What I'd like you to do is write in the chat, what is a characteristic of a, of a, a critical characteristic of a leader in your mind? Well, let's pause for a second. I'll do an exercise I usually do when I'm, I'm live and I feel as though I'm live with you today. I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, I want you to think in your life of all the positive mentors or the positive people that you've encountered 
who has played a positive role in the leader that you have become today. Whether it's from your personal life or your professional life, think of people who have played a critical part of the development of you. Have that person in your mind's eye. Now think, now that you have that person, think of two or three characteristics that they brought to the table that you absolutely admire. Go ahead and open up your eyes, go to chat and put down the two or three characteristics that came to mind when you were thinking of the one that come confident, wisdom, relatable, lovely, okay? Willingness to teach, willingness to work, the empathy, the honesty. Great, people are putting in some great answers. Open communication, willingness to explain. All of those are, are true. And here's where I, I, to reinforce a comment I said earlier. We become leaders based on the people we've encountered in our path. Those heroes, those sheroes, those legends of our past. And it's those people who have formulated who we are today and to move forward. I think I, I talk about the four giant steps of leadership and many of the things that you shared in the chat are reflective of that. I feel a leader has to bring to the table four critical aspects to be a successful leader. You have to have the ability to empower people. You have to have the ability to move them to the next level. You also have to not just empower people, but to be able to share with them the vision. And that vision allows them to have a direction of where their organization is going so that everybody can be accountable and march in the same direction. A leader has to be a good communicator so that they can articulate the vision that is expected for all of those who are, are, have a role in that organization. And last but not least, they have to be a role model. They have to practice what they preach. They have to be willing to step up to the plate and say, this is what I expect. And this is not only what I expect, this is what I do. They show up and do the things they expect out of you. So those are some things that I'm gonna take us off of a, um, writing and reinforcing things into, um, into the chat, but I just wanted to share with you a couple of lessons here. As we went through that, I'm gonna share with you some, uh, a couple of my favorite quotes. In order to succeed in any endeavor, we must be open and inclusive, and we must be able to embrace the marvelous and exciting diversity which is waiting to enrich our lives. As we meet other folks, as we work with other folks, we get better just by allowing ourselves to dip into that culture and to understand where they're coming from. So staying on that same path, my favorite quote is this one. And we're gonna take a little, uh, take a second to really find out what this, whether or not you buy into this. Let's play with this. Individuals carry their success and their failure with them. It doesn't depend on outside conditions. Let me rephrase that. Professionals in NIA carry their success and their failures with them. It does not depend on outside conditions. Let me try it one more time. Scratch out the word individual and put your name. For instance, Glenn. I'll do this for Tony because I know it to be true. Tony carries her success and her failure with her it does not depend on outside conditions. Now we've got over 50 people on this, on this um, recording and on our Zoom. Do you agree we can have 50 different definitions of success? Success varies as you go from individual to person to person. So let's kind of bring in a foundation of what success is. One of my favorite definitions of success comes from Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale says, Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. The progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And you as an individual determines what's worthy in your life. What is it that you wanna build? Who do you wanna help? Where do you wanna go? So based on creating that, 
How successful do you want to be? And are you responsible for it? So as we look at this quote, I'm going to ask it, say it for the final time. Put your name and say that you carry your success and your failure with you, and it doesn't depend on outside conditions. Now, here's the, here's the, the real deal. Some of you buy into that, and some of you don't. Some of you find that to be appropriate, and some of you don't. So on a scale of zero to 100, I want you to go into that chat and say, what percentage does that is that for you? So think for a second. Do you believe this to be 100% in your life? Is it zero? Is it 50, 75? On a scale of zero to 100, what percentage would you put for you as an individual? Forget about other people. Forget about your organization. Forget about your family, your significant other. I'm focusing on you. What is it? What percentage of the time do you feel as though it's true that you carry your success and your failure with you? And it doesn't depend on outside conditions. So I'm going to the chat and I'm looking at what's blowing up. Tony, you want to share some of that with us? Wow, I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Lots of a hundreds, but Philip said 97. So Philip, that's interesting. Go for it, Philip. <laughs> Philip. Uh, <laughs> Philip has a calculator uh, uh, next to it, next to a screen. That's 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 right, Ed. I, I, run, <laughs> I run the formula. <laughs> Um, Val that. said 90, Kathy Nab said 90. So is what so is it, that extra one that we're missing? Troy at 75. 75, all of them, nice, nice. So why is this important? Once again, individuals not only carry their success for it, it really lends itself to what percentage of the time you take responsibility for the things that are going on in your life. Wow, that, that, that holds extremely true because to the extent that we take responsibility, remember the definition of personal responsibility says that you are the principal source of the results that happen in your life, your career, your business, et cetera, and things that you're in part of, either part of or involved in you have to be the principal source of the success of that. As a leader, you're growing your network. As a leader, you're growing your business. As a leader, you're focusing on what is the franchise. All of that lends itself to how much responsibility do you take to make that happen? Now, the flip side of the same coin of responsibility is accountability. Accountability says not only are you the principal source of the results, it says that you're willing to take ownership of the results that happen in your life, your successes and your failures, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When I reach out and I do a proposal and I'm talking to a client and they say yes, I'm responsible for that. Now, but most of us agree with that. Here's the one that we have a challenge with. If they say no, we think they're an idiot. The fact of the matter is, if they say no, we have to take responsibility responsibility to say maybe we need a different twist on our message so that we can get them to buy into where we are, meaning that we need to do a little bit more homework. I am a firm believer that we have to take responsibility for everything that we encounter. As leaders, are we building people? Are we building a career? Are we trying to increase our revenue. Accountability and taking ownership is basically allowing people to and say, I own this and I'm going to make it happen. So think about it. Are you ready to make that stuff happen? So as I look at our calendar, I wanted to, to take us to, and I, I call this managing us to, if you're going to be an effective manager, there are certain skills that you need to have to bring to the table. In your handout, and I know Tony has made it prettier, in the lower right-hand corner, you can write down these um, seven or eight challenges. Uh, a leader, I mean, a manager has to learn how to be a greater influence. How do you persuade other people? A leader, as well as a manager, 
has to have that inspirational leadership, meaning that they have to have a vision that motivates others. So I, I, when I do a deep dive into some of these, let's talk about vision for a second. I do this thing called eliminating blind bowling. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with blind bowling, but let me give you Ed's take on it. Blind bowling is you go to a bowling alley, they give you a blindfold, they give you a ball. They tell you to knock over the pins. Well, I'm not sure about you, but that can affect your score. With me, it may improve my score, but it will affect your score. People need to have a good vision for them to hit the target. Well, why? what are you talking about, Ed? Here's the thing. Think at the beginning of your week. If at the beginning of the week, you don't know where the target is by Friday, you can go through the week doing a little bit of everything. But if at the beginning of the week you said, I'm going to make sure I knock out a half a dozen new clients, I'm going to knock out touch and base with other clients, I'm going to knock out the top four or five most important actions for the week. And if you know that on Monday and it's been articulated to you on Monday, there's a 90% greater possibility that you'll knock that out of the park by Friday. Most people will start their Monday and go through their week without clear goals of what are the most important aspects and what are the most important goals and objectives for a given week. It becomes imperative that we have clear goals so that we know what we should be focusing on as we move forward and as we coach people and our team to be successful. The third one there says developing others. If you're a leader, your responsibility is to help other people get better at what they do and to move forward. Be that catalyst for change. You need to be change agents. When you're talking to your prospective prospects and new customers, you have to be that change agent to help them understand why it's important. Give you an example of that. A couple of months ago, I was asked to come and do a keynote for a client um, who had been with one of my older clients, um, which was in sales for the moving industry. And he moved out of that to sales in the, the trucking industry. And this trucking industry was responsible for um, ELD, electronic logging devices. I know that sounds boring. So let me give you what, what it really means. For 18 wheelers going from interstate to interstate, you need to have logs of how often you're traveling, how much you're doing, et cetera. Well, there's a company out of New Zealand that owns 40% of the market there. They own 40% in New Zealand. They own 40% in um, Australia. They own 1.5% in the United States. United States that does LED but they do it with, without the advantage. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna summarize that story in this fashion. What the people <laughs> hired to do for that keynote was to come in and take the new 200 and share with them, while in the past, they've only been able to work with, with fleets that were up to 100, maybe 500 trucks. But because of this new technology, they're now able to work with trucks that have 20 and 30,000. They were doing some work now with waste management. And as a change agent, that waste management, I'm not sure if you know that waste management has 30,000 trucks worldwide I and mean, throughout the United States. Now that's a potential client and everybody raises the bar because they can make more money, they can get new clients, they can pursue, and their goal is to go from 1.5% to 20% ownership of the market. As change agents and catalysts, we're constantly moving towards coming up with a goal. So I, I'm gonna bounce over into the middle chart that Tony was talking about. If I went backwards here, this whole thing is what it takes to be a good manager, conflict management, building bonds, doing some network, right down this, right down this thing. You guys were talking about relationships. Are you a better self-manager? Um, um, do you manage others? Relationship is the new currency. 
building relationships is the new fuel for business growth. If you're not in the business of networking and building relationships, you're going to be working towards being out of business. It's imperative that we take the time to build those, those relationships and create teamwork and collaboration. Now, if I have all of these skills and I dip it into emotional intelligence, I will realize not only is there four areas of self-awareness, but there's critical five. If we know our own emotions, it gives us a better understanding of self-awareness. If we can manage our own emotions, we can manage ourselves. We can motivate ourselves. Number four, if we recognize and understand other people's emotion, then that social awareness allows us to have success in moving them forward. How many of you know people who will, you've heard them say things and you look at them and you realize that they didn't realize the emotional impact of what they said and how it affected people. I remember when I was in college, we went to a mental health place and we were seeing all the people who had some level of mental illness. And it was then that I totally took out of my vocabulary the word re retarded. I know by definition, retard means to slow down and to alter one's speed. Retarded is a, a neg negative comment on how people perform. When we use words like that, it impacts how they show up in your presence. It becomes important that we real take the time to understand how we impact the emotions of other people. That's social awareness. And of course, relationship management is how do we manage those other emotions? How do we get them motivated? How do we get them excited? Now, why do I, it seems as though I'm bouncing around, but here's the magic. If I go back to this one and say that these are the eight things it takes to be a good manager, infuse it with emotional intelligence, I become a better leader of people, of myself, and my business. It takes me to a place where I have a stronger model to help other people be successful. I, I like playing with my four steps to learning. As I went through this, I'm going to actually kind of wrap the, use this as a wrap up, Tony. We always go through the four steps of learning. This is something we learned in college, or we, quite frankly, for me, I learned it when I was in, in high school, that we are always going through these four steps of learning. The first step is we become unconsciously incompetent. We don't know what we don't know. If any of you have ever driven a standard automobile, do you remember when you, the first time you got behind that wheel? You had no clue what you were doing. But you may have been like me. I saw my parents do it. I said, boy, if they can do it, I know I can do it. And then that took me to step number two, consciously incompetent. I got behind that wheel and dri driving looked like a, a chicken going down the road with, a, with whiplash. And I realized that I have no clue what I was doing. That is a growth step. When you go from unconsciously incompetent to knowing that you have no clue what you're doing, we're really growing who we are and what we need to put into our minds to continue our education. So then I went to consciously competent. That means we learn new skills. One of the things I love about NIA is you guys are constantly bringing professional development so that people are learning new ideas. That new ideas teaches us, and as we learn more things, it really enriches our business, it enrich enriches us ourselves. I remember the old phrase from um, Kanai, C-A-N-I, constant and never ending improvement. We always have to be in that mindset that we can learn something. If you look at, you're looking at your screen, if all the knowledge of the world was represented by the screen that you're looking at on your computer, how much of that knowledge do you know? 
Well, I know you guys are pretty bright, but I'll tell you where, how that comes or plays out in my life. If you can take your pen and make a dot compared to all the knowledge in the world. If we don't network, we don't have the leverage points of getting that additional knowledge so that we go from consciously competent to unconsciously competent, where we can do things without thinking about it. And the magic of life is we go through that and we're doing things unconsciously competent. We have a tendency to slip and go in reverse and things change. Pandemic, would you agree? It took us from unconsciously competent where we knew what we expected and going through our lives to absolutely unconsciously incompetent because we had no idea what was coming next. That's why it's so important to be on the taking responsibility so that we can pivot to be greater leaders and to develop people so that they are producers of producers. Tony, do, do we have any questions? Okay, thank you so much, Ed. You gave us so much. Dan, check your chat, please. Um, there was a question way back. Zogis, you had a question. Can you please open your line? And you're probably gonna say, this is a senior moment, I don't remember, but can you um, stop sharing for me, Ed? Thank you, perfect. Zogis, are you still here? Yes, you I'm are. Here. Okay, here. great. So Zogis, can you repeat your question if you remember what it was? Yeah, it, it was, and 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 you're talking about leadership and and competency and things of this nature, and uh, to me this refers to having employees or a group you're trying to do that with. How do I apply this what you're teaching as it relates to leadership when you're a sole proprietor and you're starting out as just uh, one person? You, you know that is an excellent question. Uh, and and it, it goes, I'll, I'll say it has multiple dimensions. First of all, as a sole proprietor, you have to manage you. I touched on the whole concept of accountability. You know, um, I've been a sole proprietor. I, I started as a solopreneur 30 years ago, which means I have to motivate myself to get up in the morning and put in a full day going about the work to grow my business. Because if I don't do it, who's gonna force you to do it? You have to manage you. You have to have the discipline to do that. But as you do that, you wanna, the whole purpose of working as hard as we do, that we can get to the point, um, Tony mentioned that I'm a recovering CPA. I remember when I first started my firm, I did everything. I did the accounting, I did the taxes, I brought, brought in new clients. And I'm doing this and I'm working feverishly so that I had a X number of clients that I can afford to bring someone else in. So while I'm working, 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 if I can bring someone else in, it gives me the release, relief so that I can pass some of that on so I can continue to grow my business. So that discipline you have to do your job is self-management and the managerial skills to get things done. Um, okay. At the same time, you want to get so much done. Now, granted, you may have the desire not to have not to bring in other people. You may not want other people, but still, you have to manage the relationship with your clients, manage relationship with your vendors, manage relationship with people who can refer you. Gotcha. Yeah, Sorry, I'm a little long winded on some of my questions. <laughs> no. Anybody else have a question? Thank you, Ed, for that. Anybody else have a question or comment? Okay, I see some hand claps in the chat. Excellent. So I'm going to, um, okay, good. Dion, go ahead, thank you. And then Glenn, stay on everybody. I got a special thing. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I just wanna thank you for being here. I think your presentation truly was outstanding. And oh, thank I would, you. Really, I mean, it resonated with me because I am a, a certified leadership coach, uh, trainer and speaker, but it's always good to, to listen to someone else who has a different perspective 
a different flavor. I, I think being teachable and competent go hand in hand. And I think what you brought today was right on for me, resonated with me to no end. So thank you for your time, for being here and for helping us as, as entrepreneurs and leaders. Thank you. Dr. Roundtree, I appreciate that. Thanks for sharing that. Awesome. Next is Glenn. Glenn. Hey, hey, Ed, can you hear me? I can, sir. Perfect, perfect. Hey, I just have a quick question. Um, not, nothing too um, hard, I guess. I do want to know, um, you said that you're a recovering CPA. So you're a CPA. So um, um, why the exit out of the, um, the uh, accounting industry? Excellent question, Glenn. And, and a very specific answer. I grew a practice that grew relatively rapidly over a three-year period. So, from, so over a course of eight years, I had one of the fastest growing accounting practices in Southwest US. And after that point in time, I started being in, well, I was part of a wonderful franchise like you are. I was part of a franchise and they asked me if I would do tax training and speaking for tax operationally and the systems I had in place. So I found myself traveling and educating more people than running my own practice. I did the leadership thing. I hired someone else to do that. Then I ended up selling my practice to my 15 employees so that I could teach and speak more often. I love the sales side. I love the relationship side. I love being on the stage sharing with other people what does it take for them to be better. And that's, that's why awesome. it was a shift in terms of a personality. Gotcha. Got, no, thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, cause that, that's kind of a different, um, two different worlds almost in a way uh -huh. uh, from, um, from accounting to kind of teaching and coaching and leadership development. Uh, so I just kind of want to know your story, but thank you for that. I do appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. Thanks for being with us today. Yes, sir. Kathy, you're up next. Yes, thank you. Um, I wondered if you wanted to say anything about the sheet we printed out, Ed, that you gave this handout. I was a little curious about it. Yes. What could you say that again, Kathy? If you could say anything about this sheet that you handed us, this white page. And yes, I can. Um, Oftentimes when I'm speaking, if I'm doing a keynote or a short version of some of the intellectual property that I share, I'll put it into a a, a map so that they can follow it. One of the things that I, and if it's the one that I think I sent to you, and I'm positive it is, um, if you start in the upper corner, I talk about what does it take to be a leader? And if we can, but if we start at the bottom, is how I usually do that, say if we know the seven competencies of what managers do, it says you as a leader, teach your managers to be good at these concepts. And then you infuse them, and I, by the way, I can't remember who said it, but they had a comment about Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek's whole thing is you don't manage the company, you manage your people. And then the emotional intelligence comes into play to manage the relationship and the goal you have in people. And if they believe in you and your message and your why, then you get great leaders. And it's great leaders who care about their people. So I wanted to be, imagine a prism. If you had a prism and a, you put the light of being a good manager through the prism of emotional intelligence, you get greater leaders on the other side. We're here to network and we're here to learn and support what each other has going on. And so we're gonna use this last few minutes before we dismiss to allow you all to share if you have an event going on, you have a special project you're working on, you need help with. Um, you know, my daughter yesterday, she, um, my daughter yesterday, she's having trouble on her job. And so she applied for a job at Texas Children's Hospital here in Houston. And she sent me a message and said, mom, do you know anybody that works at Texas Children's? I went to LinkedIn, I typed in Texas Children, bing, HR director who helped my son get his current job at a different organization now works at Texas Children's HR. That's networking. I met her at BNI five years ago. I'm just saying, and we still stay connected. 
didn't quite know that she had made that transition, but immediately I'm like, I got you, baby. So what is it that you're working on? What are you working on? And what can we help you with? Anybody want to share? Yes, Day, hand is up. I see you. Hi, everyone. I was listening and enjoying that conversation, but I was driving, but I'm at a stop for point now. Uh, I am Day Smith. I am a coach and crown of Tony Harris Taylor, and I am a professional organizer and productivity coach. And I, along with my partners at Dexterous Organizing, are hosting an organizing event called the Wow Factor, focusing on work, organizing, and wellness to be more organized, be more productive, and transform your life. Um, it's a one-day event in three locations, Houston, the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, and virtually. So if anyone is looking for an opportunity to be more organized, be more productive, and transform their life, please join us. Uh, we are looking for sponsors as well as in-person and virtual guests to attend this event with us. And I'll put the registration in the chat for you guys to check it out. So Thank Day you, and Andrea are both NIA clients in my coaching group and they got super drastic. Like I teach my clients to get drastic, but no, they're going to do like hybrid is drastic enough. No, they're doing two lives and a hybrid at the same time. So let's support our network. Charlene, I see your hand is up. Charlene. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so me and a three of my cohorts, we are coming together to create a next level business move summit. And what we're doing is we're focusing on helping businesses, especially small business owners, really understand how to use what they have already to set the groundwork so they don't have to struggle if there is a recession, if there's any other issues that's going on in the world, their businesses should still be thriving. So I will be coming with a lot of website strategy. Um, I have my cohort who will be coming with vulnerability and understanding how to use your voice and create a actual storyline for yourself. And I also have someone who's going to help teach how to use graphics to transform your story into a visual. And we also have someone who will be helping us. She's a lawyer. She'll be helping us with understanding trademarks. So after we help you put the groundwork together, also protect your business at the same time. So that's going to happen September 24th. And we're also having VIP hot seats where we'll, act, we'll have an extra 45 minutes to help businesses specifically. Yay. What date is it again? September 24th. That's a Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Virtually. Yes, virtually. Put your link in chat. Yes. Awesome. Lena. Uh, hi, everyone. Again, thanks for this opportunity. Um, it's great to be here and networking with everyone. And I'd be remiss if I didn't speak up. But um, as Dr. Dion knows, I am newly uh, entrepreneurial. Uh, um, I left the nine to five. And so now this is it. This is all. And so I just want to make a little um, message or a little ad here. I do, like I said, promotional products. And so I hear a lot of events, people having events and things like that. So anything that you need for a trade show, let's say, or if you're going to go and showcase your business somewhere um, and you need your logo on items, that is exactly what we do. I can service all over the country. We are a women minority owned small business. Um, we've been in business for 25 years. I'm taking it over from uh, Miss Johnny, who's 83 and still working on the back end. Um, but I'm going to take the business over and, and keep it moving forward. And so um, I would be very appreciative if anybody needs anything, pens, buttons, um, hats, logos, everything. I have a little awesome. presentation that I'll drop in the chat. Thank you. Yay. Awesome. Kathy, thank you, Lena. Nice. Uh, welcome. Yes. Thank you, Tony. Um, I too want to talk about my guru. Brad Sugars is coming to Houston. If you haven't heard yet, uh, NIA headquarters is a sponsor and there's some other NIA members that are sponsoring as well. So September 14th, Brad Sugars will be here teaching us more about how to do this, how to strategically plan and network together to build our business. So September 14th, I'll put it in the chat um, and hope many to see many of you there. I will be there. 
look forward to it. Awesome, excellent. Sam, I see your hand. And Angelica, I see you next. All right, um, my name is Samuel and I'm new to the group. Uh, so I definitely appreciated uh, that whole uh, presentation. It's something that I definitely like. I like to grow. Uh, that was kind of awesome. I am a home inspector. Welcome to my office. <laughs> so, <laughs> inspections uh, kind of in the Houston area, in the broad north, northwest, all the way up to Galveston, all the way to Corpus Christi. Uh, so um, kind of getting some stuff together. Uh, I don't have any presentations at the moment, but I see how y'all are kind of networking and I totally love it. So I'm definitely glad to be part of this group and part of this network. Um, so success to everybody. Awesome, we're gonna take two more. Angelica. Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Prieto. I am relatively new to the group as well. So I wanted to let you know my business is expense reduction analysts. We increase profits and increase cash flow. And we do that one expense at a time. So if, if you are a medium-sized business with 15 employees or an up or a revenue of 1 million and up, or one of your clients is like this, and you want to give value to your clients, just give me a call. If we don't find savings, we don't charge a penny. So it's a very convenient business model for you. Thank Love you. Love it. And Becky Myers. Thank you, Angelica. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so I have a PR firm, but this is really more about one of our clients. For those of you who are in the Houston area, we just helped open a new restaurant in Spring Branch called Low Tide Kitchen and Bar. And if you guys are familiar with Harold's in the Heights, mm -hmm. Allie Jarrett's the owner there. So she just opened this and it's really very good. And um, I would suggest anybody here, first off, go try it. It's affordable seafood, but she's also got burgers and fried chicken and all kinds of good things. It's kid oriented too, and it's affordable. Um, also, if you have small groups and you're looking for a place to try out to meet, she's got room for that too. Um, it's right there at Bingle and Hammerley, if you guys awesome. know where that is. So I'll drop the link to her website in the um, chat for you, but try it out. It's a great spot. You know, I love that, Becky, that you really use this opportunity to promote your client. That's the best way to get more clients. I found that <laughs> well, true you for go. me because when I promote my clients, people are like, I need to work with her because she's got a network <laughs> and I'm going to promote her or she's going to promote me. So last thing I want to promote is my upcoming conference. It's called the Viral Networking Conference. I put the link in chat. It is an international conference. It'll be in-person in Houston, VIPs, and then online uh, general admission. I'm actually looking for two more sponsors, speaker sponsors. So I'm looking for a book expert. Who do you know? A business attorney, promotional products that can, uh, can speak in Houston, a branding expert, and an accounting um, tax person who can help people get their money together. So I'm looking for them to be speaker sponsors in front of the audience. And then I'm looking for attendees, of course. Um, everybody leaves my conference. It's a two and a half day experience, but everybody leaves my conference with appointments. Not cards, not chats, but appointments and relationships. So, and if your plane will bring you to Houston, you are welcome to show up. You guys are amazing. Make sure you save the chat. Charlene, you and I are overdue for a one-to-one, -one, so please find my link and schedule time. Um, let's go ahead, save the chat. Now, what the heck are you going to do with it when you save it? Hmm. Click on people's links, go to their links, schedule appointments. This is all good and dandy, but if no real connection comes from it, what's it all for? Three appointments per meeting. That's your goal, okay? So everybody get the chat, find people's links, go set up appointments, and let's do some business together. Thank you so much, Mr. Robinson. Um, and I appreciate all of you all. 
and y'all have a great day. See you. Thank you. you. This was awesome. Great meeting you all. It's a pleasure.